Hi, I'm Dr. Joe and I am to lovethatface.com and thank you for watching our channel. I'm so excited because we're getting close to 20 million views. So if you follow our channel, you're probably sick of hearing this, but you know that I do cosmetic facial surgery in Richmond, Virginia, and I only do head and neck. I don't do boobs, bellies, and butts. And that facelifts and eyelids are my favorite procedures and especially facelift surgery. So we've done over 1,300 uh, at the time of this video. And at this point, uh, I'm doing about one a day. So I work four days a week. We did uh, almost 100, 109 facelifts last year. And um, again, it's my passion. I've been doing this for decades. I understand the face. I love the face. I get to come to work and do this with my great staff and a great facility. And we see people from all over the world. Uh, YouTube has been amazing. So thank you for watching. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, facelift consult. And I've wanted to do this video for a long time, and it's kind of hard to do it with a patient. Um, and if you, the camera's just watching us go through our rigmarole. But what we did today, I took a patient that was a, a brand new patient, very nice personality, had not met before. And we just went in the room and started saying hi to her. And she was uh, so bubbly, I asked her, I said, do you care if we film uh, this evaluation? And so she let me. So 99.9% .9 of this is, is unrehearsed and it's real time. So uh, I hope it works for you. The evaluation is very important. Now, since I see people from all over the country and outside of the country, we do a lot of um, pre-evaluation. So people go on my website, lovethatface.com, and they can, send a, uh, they can send me pictures and a description of what bothers them. And, and then I can get an idea of if they're a candidate for a certain procedure and what procedure they may be a candidate for. Um, frequently, I'll do uh, uh, phone calls with them as the second level, sometimes Skype. Um, and we get an idea of what people want and what they have. Nothing replaces a face-to-face -face, uh, evaluation. And quite honestly, uh, that's what every patient should do. They should have a face-to-face -face evaluation with their doctor, but sometimes it's uh, impossible. So if, if a patient's in good health, um, if they uh, are not body dysmorphic, you know, if they're real people that just wanna look better and feel better, and uh, we can do a lot of this, have them come to the office a day before surgery and do the final evaluation there. But I'm gonna go on record as saying, I feel much better when I can talk to somebody. All right, so at the, at the evaluation, it's important that patients write down a little list before they come so they know what questions to ask. And um, it gives us a chance to evaluate our patients because we have to have safe surgery and we have to have natural outcomes. That's the two things I have to do. Okay, it's your face, it's my reputation. So for me to look good, you have to look good. So anyhow, we're gonna walk you through this and show you how we do an eval. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Joe Niam to lovethatface.com. Enjoy this rest of this video. So here we are. I'm Dr. Joe Niam to lovethatface.com. I think you already know that. And today we're meeting with Liz, and this is a, a cosmetic surgery consult, uh, booked as a facelift consult. And uh, so people will call and they'll, come in to make an appointment and they're gonna, you know, I like to start this by having the patient tell me what bothers them when they look in the mirror. So Liz, I'm gonna ask you uh, of your, from here to here, and you can tell the camera, when you look in the mirror, what is it that you don't like to see? Well, um, what I don't like to see is um, the, the puffiness in my lids and, um, you know, when the char characteristics of my family is like this, uh, weakness in the cheeks and kind of dropping over um, as I age and of course uh, most profoundly my neck is what I want to fix. And, and so you know I think that um, by and large we click along pretty good for about a half century and then we start to look like our parents right? Right. Okay <laughs> and how young are you? 59. All right. So, you know, it's uh, the average age for a facelift in our practice is about 53, but that includes people that are 42, which is rare, and people that are 82, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's right in that usually uh, around 50 that things start to go. So here's what I'd like to do here. We're going to start at the top and work down to the bottom, and I'm going to uh, just go over to you, uh, go over some things that I see aging changes. Now, 
when I mention something, that doesn't mean I, you know, you, I want you to get it done or I think you need to get it done or that it even bothers you. Mm -hmm. It's just educational. I'm going to tell you what you have and, and what our options are, okay? So we'll, we'll start at the top here. And as I look at you, you know, your brows are in pretty good position. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you hold this mirror up, okay, and are we doing okay on the film with the mirror? Yes. So, so basically, you know, I think they're high enough. I, you know, I don't think that really does that much for you unless mm -hmm. you just love the look of a brow lift. Now, mm -hmm. this, okay, if you relax, you have this stuff here. Yeah. And, you know, again, if it bothers you, it bothers me. If it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me. But you have enough here to remove some of this skin, muscle, and fat. And it would just, it would just make your eye look a little bit more Pop like that. a little that. bit more. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not going to change your brow mm -hmm. unless you wanted to. So you're a candidate for an upper blepharoplasty. Okay. Now, if you keep your head straight and look up at the mirror, so you can see puffiness here, uh, more so in this eye, mm -hmm. and that's just fat that protrudes. And when I do that surgery, I take, I do it from the inside with a laser. There's mm -hmm. no external scar, and I remove some of that fat, and then we laser this skin to tighten it. Okay, so if you do your eyelids, most people would do all four eyelids. And again, um, we'll get. I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we proceed. All right, now let's so lower this. So what causes? You know, uh, it's just deposit, birthdays, just heredity, <laughs> and, and lifestyle. Now, if you look at your cheeks, smile here once. So young people have round cheeks. And are we able to see that okay? Do we need to put the mirror down? Um, and that's kind of called the cheek apple, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, as we age, this kind of starts to fall, mm -hmm. all right? So when if we're going to do a facelift, you're actually going to get what I call some free cheek. In other words, when we do this, right. it's going to reposition your cheeks. And for a lot of people, that's enough cheek. Mm -hmm. All right. If you wanted more cheek in my office, my options are cheek implants, which I have in my own face. So I'm a big proponent there uh, or filler or nothing. OK. Mm -hmm. um, some people put fat in the cheeks. Uh, I have a lot of friends that do. I'm just not a proponent. I don't I don't know where that fat's going to end up in 10 years and it's really not readily reversible. So if I put a cheek implant in and um, you know you love it, it's there forever because a little screw holds it in and if it's something you didn't like it's reversible and fillers will go away. And you go in through the lip? Going through the mouth, right, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the implant. I have a lot of videos on this mm -hmm. and the implant sits on your cheek. So that's something to consider but again you're going to get some cheek just okay. by doing your facelift and I'll show you when we put this chair okay. back. All right. Mm -hmm. Now uh, as we move to your lower face, every year you and I, okay, are going to get more of this and everybody that's over, you know, you don't mm -hmm. start to see it till your late 40s, early 50s, but this, this jowling right here. And this is the stuff that starts to make us look <laughs> grand, grandmotherly and grandfatherly. So uh, the only way to really address this is a facelift. And a, above your jawline, a mm -hmm. facelift does this. So it it helps those jowls. Mm -hmm. And people come in all the time and they say, hey doc, all I want to do is, is this. Well, no, you don't want to do that, okay? Um, if, if they're doing this, that's a little bit more realistic. But we all look in the mirror and go like that. And that's kind of what a facelift does there. And when we do the facelift, we liposuction that jowl. We're cutting out some of the jowl in, in this, um, the uh, structure called the SMAS. Mm -hmm. And we're recontouring all that. So addressing the jowls is a huge part of the facelift. Okay. Below your jawline, we have this stuff, the dreaded turkey neck. Mm -hmm. Mine's worse than yours, but I don't have any hair. I so don't I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be able to correct that. And this is one thing, you know, people always say, well, I look younger with a facelift. Yes, uh, that will take decades of aging. Right. You know, I, I think a lot of my patients, their neck looks as good as it did when they were in high school. Mm -hmm. But there's no direct relationship like, if you're, if you're 55, I'm going to make you look 45. Right. No, no. But I can tell you that it's going to be great, and we're going to lay the chair down and show you in a second. So uh, I do a platysmoplasty. We make a small incision here. We cut out these little bands of muscle, and then we bring everything together in the center, and then we pull it from the back for a nice, tight jawline. Okay? So... This is very important, what I'm going to tell you right now. Two sentences that are very important. Mm -hmm. A facelift is only effective from here to here. Mm -hmm. 
and it doesn't do anything here. Okay. okay. And if you try and make it do things here, that's when you see people that have this weird look and this weird look. Okay. And we're not going to do no, that to you. Natural. All right. That's the video. Said. That's right. Right. And we're going to discuss that more. Now, next, what we're going to do. So after doing, uh, you know, over 1300 facelifts, I really think that this is an extremely predictable way to show somebody what they look like after facelift surgery. And you know, people use imaging systems and things like that, and that's really a computer cartoon. You know, you could, you could make me look like I had uh, hair. Um, so we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this chair all the way back. Okay. I'm gonna ask you to put your chin way up in the air. Okay. Now, when we do this, okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna show you now and then we're gonna change the camera angle in a second. So hold that mirror in front of you. Okay, up on top. Now, what we've done is we've taken gravity out of the situation. Okay. If you bend your neck down now, you have all that loose skin. Mm -hmm. You bend your neck up and all that skin falls to here. In reality, it's all gonna be uh, in, hidden in your back hairline, okay? All your incisions will, will be hidden. So put your chin up a little bit. Now look at your cheeks. That's how a rejuvenated mid face looks. See the roundness and the cheek apple, okay? But when you sit up, all that falls. Look at your jowls, they're gone. So when you basically sit up, your face is square. When you lay down, you have this youthful oval or taper or heart-shaped face, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the facelift does. And again, it's effective from here to here. It doesn't do anything in here. So if you chose not to do your eyelids or not to do anything to your cheeks or, you know, then then really your result's gonna okay. be from here. If you do something to your cheeks, which you might not need to because you look mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, now, usually people aren't gonna be this cheeky from just a facelift. So this is kind of what you'd look like if you did implants or fillers, okay? okay. Um, and when I sat you up and pulled your cheeks back, then you were able to see what you'd look like with just a facelift, mm -hmm. all right? So um, we'll take a break here and sit you back up. Okay. Here we are, and the patient's going to look in the mirror. We'll move that mirror out so not to block the camera. And now put your chin up, okay? So this, again, is, is I think very accurate what you're going to look like with a facelift. You're going to have your jaw contour. You're going to have your neck tightened. Uh, you've got these really nice cheeks, and, you know, your cheeks aren't going to be quite this big uh, unless you uh, do some other type of augmentation, cheek implant or fillers. Um, your lower lid that you can see the fat bag's gone. And if we laser that, you know, your skin is gonna look tighter like mm -hmm. that. Your upper lid, if you remember when you were yeah. sitting up, you had all this. Yeah. So that's kind of how your upper lid would look. And if you were going to do a brow lift, which we're not, that's about where your brow would fall. And honestly, I just don't think you need that. Now, if you put your chin down all the way, all the way, right. so we have this extra skin, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you put your chin up, all right, that skin falls back here. And in reality, it's gonna come off in the hairline where you're not gonna see it. So this incision on your temple is gonna be in the hair. You won't mm -hmm. see it. All you see is this little, you know, less than a half inch incision here. And I have to tell you, we pay a lot of attention to that. Your platysmoplasty incision will be healed, okay? So if you look at your profile, put your chin down again. See, when, when you sit up, you're like this, we're square. Mm -hmm. That's an old profile. Put your chin up. When we take that away, now you have that nice heart-shaped oval. You have your nice plump cheeks. And remember, as we said, I'm, I know I'm wearing this out, but a facelift is from here to here and doesn't do anything in here. Hence, that's why we would consider doing your cheeks, lower lids, upper lids, maybe laser, you know, some Botox there. So if you turn your neck sideways and put your chin way up, you have hardly any fat, hardly any. So almost everything you have is skin. And, uh, you know, if I laid you back and it got tighter, but you had a little half a tennis ball there, mm -hmm. then that's fat. You really don't, don't have any fat. So I'm excited and I think you'll be a great candidate. Okay, so here's where we just kind of now discuss the ins and out, Liz. So okay. you kind of know what your facial aging is, you, your upper facial aging, you have the eyelid stuff, your middle uh, face, you, ha you could use a little cheek augmentation, your lower face and neck, wouldn't I look good like this? Okay. <laughs> and uh, we didn't mention your skin 
and you're a candidate for laser resurfacing. I usually don't do that at the same time. And of course, there's a lot of other little things, Botox fillers and things that we can discuss later, but this is a surgery consult. Now, mm -hmm. some of uh, my happiest patients come in and I do four or five things at once. Facelift, cheek implants, lower lids, upper lids, brow lift, laser, um, chin implant. Uh, and they get it all done at once and you know, they're, they're done with it. Some of my happiest patients are just the opposite. They come in and they may do one thing at a time mm -hmm. or two things at a time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had mentioned that you may not want to do your eyelids and that's fine. You know, this is, a, everything we're doing here is elective okay. and you should only uh, pursue the things that bother you based on four things. Number one is what you want to do, not what I want to do. And I see people coming in sometimes that have had other consults and good Lord, they're, you know, people are pushing stuff on saying, no, you have to do this and you have to do that. You don't have to do any of it. Okay. okay? So number one is what you want to do. Okay. Number two, which is really number one A, is your health. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the, that's the biggest thing we, we look at. We have a fully accredited surgery center. And we have very, you know, we have the same uh, standards as a hospital for the type of patients we uh, accept. You're in good health, mm -hmm. no medical problems, no. nothing that makes you bleed. No. Okay. And obviously, we're going to go over that uh, a lot more. Mm -hmm. And the standard of care is for you to have a uh, physical from your mm -hmm. physician clearing you for surgery and anesthesia. Okay. So the things that kind of people decide what they're going to do here, again, based on what you want to do, your health your ability to recover, okay? So, you know, the short answer for facelift recovery is about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not two weeks before your class reunion, you know, or, or your daughter's wedding or something like that. If you had a really big situation coming up, I'd give yourself, uh, you know, four to six weeks, okay? okay? But our average patient is able to go back to work or go out socially uh, at two weeks, okay? okay? Now, I can tell you everything about anesthesia, surgery, incisions, uh, pharmacology, <clears throat> anatomy, in great uh, specific detail. How you're going to recover versus how you know the patient yesterday or the mm -hmm. patient tomorrow is going to recover is all across the board. So um, you know most people do quite well that that first couple days they're couch potatoes, you know then they're on their computer <clears throat> the next day and uh, walking around the house and. You know, usually by two weeks, people are ready to get out, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. I've seen some of um, your videos. I've seen how some of the recoveries have gone. Thank you. I feel good. So one more time, mm -hmm. what you want to do, your health, your recovery, and finally your budget. And, you know, that's the limiting factor for some people. And they spread it out, okay? School teachers are a good example of that. You know, I'll see them in the summer to do their facelift, and I'll see them at spring break and do their <laughs> cheeks, and I'll see them, in, you know, in the uh, uh, winter to do something else. So... It's okay. all elective. And the two things that we have to do, and this is really important, there's only two things that I have to do. Number one, you have to have a safe experience, and I can't underline the importance of patient mm -hmm. safety. Number two is a predictable and natural outcome. Mm -hmm. You have to look good. If you don't look good, I don't look good. Okay, that's a deal. It's your face, it's my reputation. So that is, you know, that is uh, everything to me. So. I don't think you can talk enough about this stuff. Uh, again, uh, my, I have 9,000 before and after pictures on my website. I have endless hours of, of video. I think if you watched them all, you could do your own <laughs> facelift, okay? But again, your job is to gather information here. Mm -hmm. My job is to keep you safe and, and make you look uh, good. So again, I think that um, that's kind of the, the basis of this first mm -hmm. appointment. Now, should you decide to move forward, uh, uh, then we'll come in again for a preoperative okay. appointment. And um, I'm going to give you my cell phone and email uh, because it never fails. Like for me, I go to the doctor, you know, for something and then I, uh, I'm driving home and I say, oh, no, I didn't ask him about this. You feel free to contact us. And uh, it, it, as you can tell, I've got the best staff in the world. Yeah, that they're helping yeah, to assist you. I'll agree with that. Do you have any other questions for me right now? Mm. Um, no, you know, I think I did a lot of research before coming, and, and if they come up, I'll be sure to call in. And well, and, and this is an easier consult, and one thing about Liz is she did. She went on my website, she looked at the videos. You know, when people come in here and they don't do any homework, it makes it harder for us and harder for them. 
they'll sit here and say, well, you know, where are the incisions and, and what kind of anesthesia do you use? By the way, we'll use general anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a, a fully accredited surgery center, full-time anesthesia staff, and I think general anesthesia is absolutely the safest way to do this. And I think your chances of uh, being in peril are much more dangerous when you're in your car than when you're in my office, okay? okay. And uh, so you will have more questions and, and we'll get there. And I can't thank you enough no, thank uh, you. for allowing us to do thank this. You. And uh, I'm doing what I love, uh, facelift, consult, and surgery. I'm Dr. Joe and I am to lovethatface.com. And thank you so much. Okay, thanks so much. Now the fun part. We're going to look at some facelift cases. I'm going to show you about uh, 20 cases before and after, and you don't have to watch them all. But if you're thinking about having a facelift, it certainly is a good investment to spend about 25 minutes to really research and understand what a facelift does and doesn't do. So we'll show you some big lifts, some small lifts, some females, some males, some light-skinned patients, some dark-skinned patients, and uh, let's proceed. Again, I have told you numerous times throughout this video that I feel that I'm just the luckiest guy in the world that I get to go to work and do this kind of stuff every day. I love making people look younger and doing safe and effective uh, facelift surgery with natural outcomes. Okay, the first case is going to be a face and neck lift, upper and lower blepharoplasty, a chin implant, and a full face laser skin resurfacing. So if we look at the before picture, we can see this that the aging face is square. You see how that is square on the bottom because of the jowls and the fat and the extra neck skin. And after we do the facelift, we make this into a tapered face. And a tapered faith, face is youthful. And that's a common theme throughout this that I want you to pay attention to. So again, you have this patient with jowls. Uh, fat under the chin and extra neck skin and that's uh, before in the right pickers after same thing uh, we also did a, a chin implant on this patient I'm sorry I'm not sure if I mentioned that so we've taken this recessive chin this fat this jowling extra neck skin and made this nice youthful angle this patient probably hadn't had a neck like this since she was in high school same thing the, everything is just excessive here except her chin which is recessive and people with recessive chins and facial aging the fat and the skin it just all stacks up on their neck by doing a face and neck lift and refining the jawline and tightening everything and doing a chin implant it makes an entirely different patient and this patient is so happy okay not because uh, how she looks but because how she feels. When she looks in the mirror, she feels like a different person. And so much of cosmetic surgery is not just how you look, it's how that look makes you feel. Very important. Another picture from the side. So that was a very happy patient. Now this is a small lift. Again, some lifts are very big. Previous, previous lift was kind of a medium lift. Here's a smaller lift because the patient has smaller aging. So you can see that the patient has some wrinkles and some skin excess and some jowling here and a little bit of fat and crinkly neck skin. That's before and that's after. This is not a patient that had tons of excess skin. We took very little skin off this patient, but certainly enough to go from here to here. Same thing. We have this aging, crinkly skin. We have fat here. We have jowling. We've lost the mandibular shape, and we have all this extra, extra skin. Now this patient has a much more youthful profile. And again, many times these patients tell me that their neck hasn't been this tight since they were in high school. Same patient before and after. Same patient before and after. Okay, so when I say comprehensive facelift, basically that is my go-to facelift, and that is a typical facelift. Incisions in front of the ear, behind the ear, an incision under the chin. We do a platysmoplasty to tighten the neck muscles, and we do a smassectomy to tighten the deep structures within the face. So when I say comprehensive facelift, that's my regular adult facelift. 
And this is a patient in her 60s. She had jowling and some really thick banding and extra skin here. And if you look, we have given her jawline back and given her her neck back. Now, this is a big lift because there's a lot of skin, and that's just heredity. This patient has no fat, no body fat. So we had this jowling, and we had this uh, excessive neck skin, and we had this droopy chin. So afterwards, we have a nice tight neck and a, uh, a better chin profile and a better jawline. This is a very happy patient to go from here to here. And that's a comprehensive facelift, takes about two and a half hours to do, has about a two-week recovery. This is the patient's before and after incisions. So this is before her facelift. And if you follow my work, you know that I do this triarcuate incision in front of the ear. And you can see that you cannot barely see where her facelift incision was. This is the before on the other side. This is the after. I take great care in over three decades of doing surgery, I think I've developed pretty good skills in uh, scar management. And I am very pleased with the scars that I get from facelift surgery. I can't say that it's impossible that we ever have an ungraceful scar, but it's really rare. And if we do, we will laser that scar or treat it otherwise. I pay a lot of attention to my scars because that is my signature. And I do a lot of work inside there. But, you know, the only thing that the patient or the hairdresser or the husband sees is this after scar. Another comprehensive face and neck lift. Again, here is a patient with just a lot of extra neck skin, which is heredity. You know, these patients will tell you their mom had it, their grandma had it. Have this jowling here and loss of the definition. So look at the before and the after. This patient is looking down at the ground, and this is the pose or the view that we hate to see when we're doing FaceTime uh, or any type of thing where we're looking down at a device and we see our profile. It just, you know, a lot of people come in for surgery because they didn't realize they were this bad. This is before the facelift, after the facelift. Makes a huge difference. And I call that tech neck. So we've improved the jowl, we've improved the neck. And this patient went from a straight line with hanging skin to a better, more of a uh, angled profile and defined jawline. You can see her scar is still a little bit pink. This is probably about eight weeks after surgery. Usually by 12 weeks after surgery, the scars are pretty imperceptible. Another comprehensive face and neck lift. Again, this patient is in her 60s. Her chief complaint were these jowls and all this extra neck skin before, after. The patient from the right three-quarter view, you see the extra skin, you see the jowl before, after. Here we have a tight neck and a nice smooth jawline. Also, you notice that her marionette lines improved here. From the side, you can certainly see the improvement that this patient had. And as females age, sometimes they get this totic chin. Sometimes it's referred to as a witch's chin where it droops. And we're usually able to tighten that up a bit when we do this procedure. Here's the patient's before facelift. Here's after her facelift. You, the scar is really imperceptible. Here's the other side before, the other side after. If you really sneak up and look, you can see a little bit of a scar, but it's a great trade-off for the rejuvenation. Another comprehensive face and neck lift. This is a patient that was just really an amazing case, really nice patient, and she was really bothered by this hereditary skin excess, this turkey gobbler, and this patient wasn't that old. Uh, I believe she was in her late 40s or early 50s, and we just changed her life by restoring her profile. And if you look at the incisions, they look great. If you look at her earlobes, they look the same after surgery. These are all little important nuances of facelift surgery. And where she just had this really full neck, 
that would hang over a, a turtleneck or a collar and no visible jawline. After I did her facelift, she has a nice visible jawline, a nice tight neck. I, I can't tell you how happy that patient is. And here is her before where her incision will be. Here's her incision after the facelift, before, after. Another case, a face and neck lift only. This is an African-American patient, a lot of neck skin and jowling, and you can see that neck skin is tightened in the after picture. Such a happy patient to get rid of this stuff and get rid of all these creases and folds and extra skin, as well as to now have a jawline where she did not have that before. You can see the obvious improvement. And it makes me feel so good when I see these patients to remember each case and remember how frustrated the patients were with their aging and how happy they were after their surgery, how it changed their lives. And that's what makes me feel so uh, happy to ha have this skill set to be able to change people's lives. I, I, I take that very seriously and it's truly a passion. And this patient basically had no profile and now we have given her a profile. Here's another patient. Uh, 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 Latino patient and again we operate on all skin types and uh, this patient you know was in her uh, early 50s and she had some jowling and some neck skin and you can see the difference that we made very happy patient and look at her incisions afterwards and if you notice her earlobes look exactly the same you see a lot of people after facelift surgery that have very deformed earlobes this is an Asian patient, so just showing you different skin types, and um, we did a facelift and a small chin implant, and uh, this patient was in her 40s. She was young, uh, but she was bothered by her heredity and knew where this was going to go in the future. <clears throat> this case is a comprehensive face and neck lift, along with simultaneous cheek implants and laser skin resurfacing. And... This is a case that is really one of my favorite cases because it's a patient that just looked old and tired. Is when she came in, she says, Doc, I look old and tired. And so the cheek implants filled out her cheeks. The facelift made just a world of difference in her marionette lines, in her uh, neck skin, and in her jaws. She didn't have a jawline. Now she has a jaw. And again, look at the patient on the left. Looks like an aged, tired patient. Look at the patient on the right. She looks smooth. She looks more volumized. Having these cheek implants makes a huge difference because when you have all this <clears throat> drawn uh, looking region here that's hypovolumized, just by replacing that volume, and I like to use cheek implants. I have them in my own face. And she had this typical elderly jawline with the multiple contours and the jowl sticking out. Now she has a youthful jawline. This is exactly what a facelift does. The next case is comprehensive facelift, cheek implants, and a chin implant. Again, this is a small procedure. I, I think this case took two hours and this patient was flat here. So we put cheek implants in and now she has nice youthful roundness. She had this hereditary neck skin. She told me, she said, Doc, I know where I'm going to be by the time I'm 55. You got to do something. So did a facelift and just a fabulous case on a fabulous patient. This is a facelift and upper eyelids. And uh, can't see the upper eyelids, obviously, but same thing. We have extra neck skin. We have these bands and these uh, ringlets. We have this jowling. And now we have a tight neck and a tight jawline. We've get, gotten rid of this jowl and have a nice youthful jawline. Improved this neck skin. And this patient actually had a little bit of wrinkling here. Uh, and we went back and lasered that. I need to update my picture because just a little bit of laser resurfacing smoothed that out. It's interesting. You can see where her mole was before surgery and where it is after surgery.
So you can see how we've tightened this. Again, I think if you want to judge a surgeon and their expertise, you can look at their earlobe positions before and after. You can look at their scars before and after and look at their hairlines before and after. And that's how you can tell somebody that knows what they're doing. Before, after. Before, after. She went from having no jawline to having almost a 90 degree jawline like she did when she was uh, youthful. Here's the patient looking down. When she was doing FaceTime or something, this is what she sees, and now it's much improved. Here's her before incision, after incision, before incision, and after incision. And I really think that I have figured out over thousands of facelifts and decades of working on this, and I do this incision that I call a triarcuate incision, and I do it in front of the ear, so you never see my tragus. This is called the tragus, this little hump here. And you'll notice that a lot of people after facelift surgery, you don't see their tragus anymore. You can look right in their ear. So I make my incisions out here in front, so it always preserves that tragus. And I'm not saying by any means that I hold the keys to the universe for facelift incisions, because uh, different doctors have better success with different incisions, but I can tell you this, I have figured out what works best in my hands and uh, is really aesthetic on my patients. I get a lot of referrals from hairdressers, and when that starts happening, you know you're getting somewhere because they see the good, the bad, and the ugly scars. Next patient, face and neck lift, upper and lower eyelid surgery and chin implant. And it, this patient just had thick nasolabial folds, thick marionette lines, thick neck, and we've improved that. Now, the facelift is never going to make all of this stuff in the center improved. The facelift does very little for the central part of the face. It's really from the nose down to the collarbone where you get most of your effect. And if you look at these two patients, this looks like this patient's mother or at least her older sister. It's such a great feeling to take somebody that looks like this, do a facelift and a chin implant, and make them look like this. This is why I love what I do. Here's face and neck lift. This is a smaller lift, okay? This patient has no body fat, really. A little bit of jowl, a little bit of neck skin. And truly, I don't think this patient could have had a better looking neck when she was in high school. Same patient. Same patient. Here's when she looks down before surgery, after surgery. Another face and neck lift. This patient's in her 60s, a uh, very thin lady, so we did not do any or very little fat recontouring or removal. A lot of jowls, a lot of neck skin. She has these neck bands before, after, before, after, before, after. Here's, again, some patients have a facelift by itself, but most patients are doing at least their eyelids when they do a facelift. So here's facelift, upper and lower eyelids, and laser around the eyes. Uh, this patient's in her 70s. She looked very tired and just, you know, complained about this aging look in this area. And we have definitely made her look more awake, more alert, brighter, younger. And our goal is not to make these people look different. We want to make them look as good as they can for their age. It would be inappropriate for me to try and make this patient look like she was 40 or even 50 because she's in her seventh decade. We want to make her look like a really great 70 year old. Here's her eyelids that just happen to be in the same group of pictures. So you can see the before and after pictures of her eyelids. This is face uh, and neck lift and cheek implants. And when I say face and neck lift, a facelift includes the neck. All right. People are confused about that. And um, so a facelift is really a, a face and neck lift because it, it really addresses below the nose to the collarbone, lower face, and the neck. 
Here's a great example of the square aging face. It literally is like a square block. And after we rejuvenate it, it is oval again. It's a youthful heart-shaped face. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, when we look at somebody, why do we know they're old? Well, one of the reasons is, you know, they don't have any volume here. All that volume has fallen down here. They're square. They have extra skin. So these are some of the reasons. And you talk about a happy patient. I can't tell you how many other friends this patient has sent me to do uh, facelifts. To go from basically her extra neck skin started at her chin and went to her chest. Just a great feeling. Now, here are some cases that you may have seen on my web page. These are older. Some of these I probably did almost 20 years ago. But they're still oldies but goodies, and they're in my Hall of Fame. And here's a patient just had a high BMI, a lot of body fat. We were able to sculpt that, did her eyelids, uh, did her cheek implants, and her face and neck lift. Huge difference, life-changing. Here's a patient, one of my nicest patients I've ever had. Uh, I did a... Um, upper lids, lower lids, cheek implants, chin implant, full face laser, and face and neck lift. That's most of the things I do on one single patient. So that probably took about four hours, but truly transformed this patient. This is one of the uh, patients with the largest amount of skin that I have done and obviously so happy. And if you look at her incision before and after, I don't think anybody's going to walk up to her and said, you had a facelift. The only reason they're going to say that is seeing what a difference she has here. It's a patient like this that may get their driver's license picture <laughs> retaken, that it's such a dramatic change. In terms of males, males are uh, obviously a smaller part of all cosmetic surgery, but it's a growing portion. And uh, here's a male with heavy jowls, heavy neck skin before and after. Another patient where we got rid of this skin and uh, also did his eyelids. Uh, you can just barely see his scars. You know, if I waited another month to take that picture, you probably wouldn't see him at all. And his earlobes look perfectly natural. And his hairline and his sideburns haven't changed at all. Before, after, before, after. Another male patient, very, very thick, heavy neck before and after. Another male. Another male with a lot of skin and no jawline. You basically just don't see a jawline here on this patient. And now you see a more youthful jawline. Another male patient, it's a big guy. He's about 6'5". And... Um, if you notice here, he really had a recessive chin and he had this advanced aging. Um, so we did a chin implant and a facelift and pretty much changed his profile and I think changed his life. Another view of the same patient. So basically, give me two more minutes here. Um, I am very, very involved in what I do for a living. For a lot of people, it's a job. For me, it's a passion. I still have a lot of outside interests. I have a lot of hobbies. I have a family. Um, and I have two special needs children that demand a lot of time. But my outlet and my passion is my job. I do a lot of teaching. I have a cosmetic surgery workshop. This is the I've done this. I used to do it several times a year. This year was our 41st workshop and we have doctors, surgeons of every specialty come from all around the world. I have an online video series for students, residents, doctors um, to learn or to brush up on their cosmetic surgery. This is available to download. And I'm a prolific writer. I've written hundreds of articles on cosmetic facial surgery. I've written about 30 chapters in other people's textbooks and I've written seven of my own textbooks. Uh, my latest textbook is The Art and Science of Facelift Surgery, and my flagship book is Cosmetic Facial Surgery. You're looking at the second edition. I'm currently writing the third edition, and this is uh, published by Elsevier, the largest medical publisher uh, in the world. And I'm happy to say that these books uh, are in the top 
uh, medical sales on Amazon. It really makes me proud because I poured my life's work into these books. I am very involved with teaching. As I said, uh, we have our courses every year. Uh, it is not uncommon um, to have a residence to uh, occasionally come and observe surgery. But when I do my course, we have a, a full house. Never, never, ever does anybody ever touch a scalpel except me. I'm the only surgeon. But when we have these uh, courses, they're very popular and patients um, actually kind of line up uh, to be part of this course because it's a great learning and teaching experience. So basically, my name is Dr. Joan Iamtu. I practice cosmetic facial surgery in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, face lift surgery, you know, face and neck lift surgery is my passion. And I think I have one of the largest practices on the East Coast. We see patients from all over the country and all over the world. Um, I do a lot of online consultation. I'm happy to look at pictures and and uh, talk to patients uh, about their uh, surgery. And it's just something that I love doing. My website is lovethatface.com. And my website is full of more videos and cases. I have 9,000 before and after pictures. And uh, our phone number is 804-934-FACE, uh, which is actually 804-934-3223. Uh, I want to thank you for giving me the greatest gift of all, which is your time. And anytime you can sit down and talk to a world audience about your favorite thing in the world, life is great. And thank you again. I'm Dr. Joe and I am to stay safe.